after the uh, confirmation that Montreal did get the franchise, they had to rush to uh, get Jerry Park expanded and then ready for opening day. And we were lucky enough that uh, it was a sunny day, it was a beautiful weather. I remember I was driving a convertible at the time and I drove down to Jerry Park with the top down. And uh, the, the ground was so soft that during the game, John Bateman, who was maybe a little overweight, was sinking behind the plate and they had to put some more dirt in there to make, so he wouldn't disappear from the crowd. We were excited of moving out of Jerry Park because Jerry Park was so small and you, you knew that moving to Olympic Stadium uh, would, uh, would mean additional fans, additional money, uh, brand new uh, facility, but it was not built for, for baseball. And uh, I mean, uh, despite all the improvement, they, they, tried, they, they, they tried to move the fences in, they tried to back up home plate toward the, fan, uh, toward the, the fans, uh, I can remember the first time uh, I sat in my boot uh, at Olympic Stadium, I said, I hope we get a TV monitor in there because I can't see the ball. I mean, we were so far away because anybody that had visited a baseball stadium, the stands are built at an angle. In the Olympic Stadium, it was built like a slope. We should, we should have played on the, the Sunday, but there was no roof. And uh, after discussion with Jim Fanning, who was then the manager, and the expo management and uh, the people in Dorval as far as uh, the weather pre prediction, it, it didn't sound good, so they decided to wait until the Monday to, to have the game. And if my memory serves me right, uh, Fernando Valenzuela started the game for the Dodgers. And in the first inning, and that's something that maybe a lot of people uh, held a little grudge against Andre Dawson, with men on first, men on third, nobody out. Andre hit into uh, an, uh, a double play, and uh, Fernando was off the hook. The, the Expos took a one nothing lead, but then the the offense died. Uh, I can recall that Tommy Lasorda had somebody warming up in the bullpen right there in the first inning, so a base hit probably could have sent uh, Fernando to the showers, and God knows what would have happened before. I remember that. Uh, I was working with Claude Raymond at the time and uh, we both had our suitcases ready to go to New York and meet the, the Yankees in the World Series, but it didn't happen. So when uh, we got to the eighth inning and uh, uh, Monday had hit the, the home run, I can recall, I, and I talked to Rick Monday many times after that because Rick became a broadcaster for the Dodgers and I talked with him often and he said when the ball hit his bat. He didn't think it was, he, he was hoping the ball would hit the fence and maybe for a double, or at best a triple. And I can still see Andre Dawson backing off, looking at the ball and then his back to the wall and looking in despair, but he no way could reach it. And uh, I mean, it sent a, a terrible feeling among the, the fans that were there that day. And uh, among the Expos employees also, because it would have been probably the the first and only time the Expos could have gone to the World Series. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was my life for 36 years. So uh, that's why I'm here in Quebec City and continue to broadcast, doing the job that I love the most. Uh, I miss the camaraderie that existed not only between the players and uh, the broadcasters and uh, the media people. I miss the ca camaraderie that existed with other Broadcasters throughout, uh, you know, the Vince Gullies and uh, John Miller, who just was elected to Cooperstown. The, those, are, you know, were friends of mine, the people that I saw every every day during. Uh, now, what when I watch, uh, let's say, a Dodger game or a Giants game, and I hear the, their voices, I miss them. People say, well, you know, MLB will never come back to Montreal, and I said, show me the money, and they'll come back. Do you think that what happened with the Expos experience could happen to the Blue Jays? Well, I think that the Blue Jays are in a situation that's completely different than the Expos. First, uh, they've got their own TV network, Rogers. Uh, the Expos didn't have that. Number two, uh, the, the Blue Jays were not threatened by MLB f 
for uh, you know to take them off the map like uh, it was in the year 2000 when uh, Bud Selig announced that two teams would uh, be uh, you know disbanded. Uh, he didn't name them, but we knew it was the Expos and the Twins. Uh, I don't think that the media, the politicians, the businessmen, if a threat to disband the, the Blue Jays or to have them move out of Toronto would happen, I think they would rise. But nobody did here in Quebec. The politicians didn't seem to care, the businessmen didn't seem interested in investing money. For a while, I mean, as strange as it may be, the Canadians were owned by an American, Mr. Gillette. Mr. Wittenhall is an American, he owns the Alouettes. And here in Quebec City, Miles Wolf is an American, he owns the Capital. And until the, the Molson brothers bought the Canadians back, where are the financials? Where are the, the, the big money, in, in, whether in Quebec or in Canada? I mean, when the Canadians were up for sale for the first time, Gillette bought them with a loan from the province of Quebec. So some of the financiers, the various people, millionaires or billionaires here in Quebec or in Canada, didn't seem to be interested in what is considered to be the top sport franchise in Canada. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, uh, in the States, you look at uh, politicians. I'm always referring to Pennsylvania as an example. It's about the size of the province of Quebec. Within a five-year span, they built a new stadium for the Pirates. They built a new stadium for the Steelers. They're building a new stadium now for uh, the, the Penguins. In Philadelphia, they built a new arena for uh, the Flyers. They built a new stadium for the Eagles. They built a new stadium for the Phillies. And we can get at least one stadium being built here. I guess Gary Carter would be behind the plate. Uh, probably the big cat, Andres Galarraga, at first base. Uh, Jose Vidro at second. Orlando Cabrera at third. You can take your pick of uh, Tim Wallach or uh, Larry Parrish at third base. And in the outfield, boy, you know, with uh, Tim Raines, Andre Dawson, uh, Larry Walker, Rusty Staub, uh, and later in the the year, the guys like Marquis Grissom and uh, uh, Vladimir Guerrero, you can take any three of them and the rest could be substitute and you would, if one or the other, you wouldn't lose. Well, I think the, the best pitcher ever to come out of the Expos organization was uh, Steve Rogers. But then you would go with the two Martinez, uh, Pedro and, uh, and Dennis. Uh, then I guess you could go with uh, Gullickson, uh, you could go with uh, people like uh, Brent Smith, uh, and in relief, she was, you, you, you could have people uh, like Reardon. Uh, the, you, you, we had so many.